Hi everybody! In the last video, we talked about an average speed, speed over an interval of time. Now, ultimately, our goal in calculus is actually to do what we're going to talk about today. So our goal, what we really want to determine is the speed of a falling object at a single instant t0, instead of using its average speed over an interval of time. So at a specific instant, how fast is this object traveling? Not over two seconds or three second time period, just at one particular instant. So the snap of a finger at that particular moment in time, how fast is it traveling? So the question is, how can we calculate the speed at a single instant if all of our tools require a time interval? The average speed formula we used in the last video required a period of time, a t1 and a t2. If we don't have a t1 and a t2, our tools are not going to work. So instead, we can approximate the speed at a single instant by calculating the speed at smaller and smaller intervals starting at our instant t0. So t0 is whatever time you want to know the speed at, and then you're going to build a teeny tiny interval out from that time. Now that interval can be a, from your time forward in time or from your time backward in time. Our formula is actually going to do a forward in time, so we're going to have our time and then a little bit after that. So that's going to be our teeny tiny interval we're going to focus on. So here in the blue box you'll see a definition for average speed. And we're going to use the notation with an h. This is going to help move us into our calculus notation. So let me explain. First we're going to read it. Let the function f of t be the distance traveled at time t. Just like before, that hasn't changed. Let h equal delta t. So you may have seen delta t in the past. Delta t means the change in time. So h is a little tiny change in time. So how small it depends on how small you want to go. We're going to do a couple examples with a couple different values of h. And you're going to see the impact of how small your h gets can impact the value of your um, approximate instantaneous speed. All right, so h is the change in time. Then we will find the average speed over this teeny tiny interval. And we're going to let this interval get smaller and smaller and smaller by letting h get smaller and smaller and smaller. So think of this. Uh, let's see. So t0 here is what used to be our t1. And t0 plus h is what used to be our t2. But instead of having two different times, we're going to have our time we're interested in and then a little h that we add to get our second time. So then in the formula below, this is just like we had earlier, but think of this as being your t2, and think of t0 as being your t1. So it's still f of t2 minus f of t1 on top, just like the average speed formula we've already discussed. On the bottom, this h might be a little bit confusing. So before we had t2 minus t1. Well, if you look at our t2 and t1 values that we are using, T2 is T0 plus H minus T1 is just the T0 now. If we subtract these, the T0s cancel and we get H. So H is simply the change in time, how much, how large our interval of time is. And that's basically what we had, that is what we had before when we did T2 minus T1. It was the how far apart are our time values. And that's what H is representing here. Now there is one important note to make. H is not allowed to be zero. So you have to have an interval of time which makes sense because we're still using the average speed formula, which required an interval of time. The trick that we're doing is we're letting h get super, super small, um, approaching the value of zero, but we're never actually going to get to zero. And we're going to look and see if we can find a pattern in our values of our average speed as we let h get smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so here's our problem. We want to find the speed of the following orange at t1 and at t2. This is two separate questions. So remember, when we talked about the following orange problem in our previous question, we had the function f of t equals 16t squared. This is just the fault formula for a free falling object. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula, delta y over delta t. This is the average speed formula, but we're letting everything be very small in their intervals of time. So we're going to change to the delta notation. Delta means the change in y over the change in time. So it's just the change in distance over the change in time, just like our average speed formula. So think of this as distance over time. So according to the formula, we need f of t0 plus h 
minus f of t0 all over h. Now, find the speed of the following object at t equals 1. Let's start with t equals 1. So if t equals 1, that's going to be the value we're interested in. So according to the formula, that's our t0. So our formula becomes f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Okay. So the question now is, what are we going to let h equal? Well, it's up to you, really, how big of an interval you want to work with. Now, down below, I've actually already worked out some of this. I'm going to show you how to work out the first one, but then I've got the formulas already. So here are the different values of h that we're going to look at. Notice we start with h equals 1, one full second of a time interval. So that means we're going from t, t0 is 1 all the way to 1 plus 1, because we're going to add the h to our initial time to get our full interval. And then look at what happens to the h values as we go down this list. Notice h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're approaching the value of 0. Okay, They're going as close to 0 as we can get. If you want to go closer, you have had it. But hopefully this will be enough to give you an idea. Okay, so let's just start with the first one, h equals 1. If we use h equals 1, then our formula, we're just going to plug in the 1. That means we're doing f of 2 minus f of 1 all over h, we said was 1. So this is in the case where h equals 1. Special case here. All right, so now we need f of 2 minus f of 1. Didn't we already do that? I think that's what we did on the average speed. So f of 2, we already found, was 64. And f of 1 was 16. And the denominator, well, that's just 1, so that doesn't do anything. This equals 48. And our units, we said, was the distance units, which was feet, over the time units, which is seconds. So there you go. This is the average speed over a one-second interval. So what we could do is we could continue this process. We could do, let's suppose, let's take this formula, and let's suppose h equals a smaller number. So in our table, I believe I had 0.1. Yes. 0 0.1. So if h equals 0 0.1, what we would do is take our formula, plug that in. So f of 1 plus h, so that's f of 1.1 minus f of 1 all over h, 0 0.1. At this point, you would need a calculator. You would need to do 16 times 1.1 squared minus f of 1. So we would have 0 0.16 minus 16, oh, I forgot, no, that is right, all over 0 0.1, sorry, copied the wrong number, it should be 19.36, so that leaves us, so 19.36 minus 16, 3.36 divided by 0 0.1, or 33.6 feet per second. So you can see here we have 48 feet per second for a full second interval, but if we take it down to just 0.1 of a second, we end up with 33.6 feet per second. What if we take the interval even smaller, even closer to just the instant when t equals 1? Well, that's what's going on in this table. So I've showed you two of uh, the actual calculations, and you'll see the numbers down here. So we, have, we found the 48, I showed you how to do that, and we found the 33.6. If you wanted to continue to get closer to the actual instantaneous rate of change, you would continue to do this process, but letting h become smaller and smaller values. Notice what's happening to the average speed. The average speed is becoming more and more... Um, constant in its nature. It's changing less. So the smaller the h value we have, the more specific the average speed is becoming. But I want you to look at this. We say that h is approaching zero. What does it appear that the average speed is approaching? So what is approaching is what we would consider to be the instantaneous speed. So let's just do a hypothesis. If you look at these, 48, 33.6, 32, 32, and a teeny tiny bit, and 32 even less, it looks like this is approaching 32 feet per second. So that's just a hypothesis, and that's really what we're doing at this point, is we're approximating what we think this is approaching for the instantaneous rate. Now, we could do the same exact process, but at a different time interval, or a different time um, that we're interested in the instant speed at. So if we're interested in the instantaneous speed at two seconds into the object traveling, we would do everything that we did before, but we'd plug in t0 equals 2, 
and we would start over with our h values and we'd find these average speeds. As we go down this list of average speeds, remember these are average speeds, what we're doing is we're seeing what uh, the instantaneous speed is going to be approximately. So we're getting smaller and smaller time intervals until we get so close to our specific time t0 equals 2 that we could say at the end here that these values look like they're approaching 64 feet per second. Is it right? Is it wrong? At this point we don't know. At this point we are simply approximating, we're estimating, and we're basically doing a good guess. So what can we say at the, about the speed at each of these times? Well, at once, at, well, okay, let's start at the beginning. Initially, at zero seconds into traveling, we are um, not moving. So speed equals zero. At t equals one second, it looks like we are traveling at a speed of 32 feet per second. At two seconds in, Remember, this is at only at that particular instant. That's what we've got here. We're not looking at intervals so much anymore because we've gotten our interval down so close that we're considering this to be the speed at that particular time only. So two seconds in, we're traveling oops, at 64 feet per second. So what do you say is happening to this object as we go through time? As the object is falling, what does the speed show us is occurring in our object? We're going from 0 feet per second, 32, 64, it looks like our object is accelerating. And in fact, we're actually going to see later on in this course, we're going to actually find the acceleration. Uh, we're, we're going to actually prove that this is what's happening, that the object is accelerating. All right, so you've seen some examples of plugging in numbers. So what I want to do now is I want to show you some cool algebra that we can observe. In the previous problems that we've been doing, we set t0 equal to 1. So we're going to focus back in on that example. And we're going to use algebra to expand the numerator and simplify the equation delta y over delta t. So let me remind you, delta y was the change in y. So f of t0 plus h minus f of t0. And then delta t is a change in time, which is represented by our h now. So in this case, we're going to plug in 1 for our t0, and we're going to leave h alone. This is going to be very common in a lot of your problems. You're actually not going to know what h is, because our goal is to let h be smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so now that we have this, let me remind you, the function that we were using, f of t, was 16t squared. And we're going to plug in these values here. So this is something I like to do on the side. This is an algebra tool you're going to need to remember. So when we're plugging in 1 plus h into the function, that goes in for whatever's in the parentheses. So here it's going to go in for the t. Don't forget to square the whole thing. So we're going to have 16. The t gets squared. So whatever goes in for the t, the whole thing has to be squared. At this point, you need to simplify before you bring it back into your problem. So I'm doing the algebra on the side, and then I'll bring it back in once I've simplified it. So let's leave the 16 alone. Remember, when you have a parenthesis squared, what does that literally mean? 1 plus h squared literally means 1 plus h times 1 plus h. So I'm going to write that out to help us understand what's happening. And then we see that we can FOIL to multiply these parentheses together. So 1 times 1 plus 1 times h h times 1 plus h times h. Now if you're really good, you can go ahead and combine the middle terms. If you need the middle step, you go for it. So the first term would be 1. We're going to have 1h and 1h. So that's going to be 2h's in the middle when we combine the middle terms. And h times h would be h squared. The last step I would do if I was doing this problem on my own is to distribute the 16. And like I said, do as much algebra on the side as you can and then bring it in. So 16 times 1 plus 16 times 2h, plus 16 times h squared. So now that we've simplified that, we're going to bring it back into our problem. So f of 1 plus h is 16 plus 32h plus 16h squared, minus, don't forget the rest of this, you still need to minus f of 1. So f of 1, we just go back to our function, 
We plug in 1 for t, so that's just 16. All of this is divided by h. Remember, we still don't know what h is. We're just letting it stay general for now. All right, so now we've finished the algebra on this side. We've put brought that in. Now we just need to continue to simplify our average speed equation. So if we look up top, is there anything you can simplify up here? I would cancel out the 16s from the front and the back. So we end up with 32h squared plus 16h squared all over h. Oops, I put an extra square on there. Let me erase that. It's just 32h. All right, now, another algebra thing you need to remember. When every single term involves the h, you can reduce every single term by h. Basically what you're doing is you're factoring an h out of the numerator. So if I pull out the GCF of h, this is what would be left over h. Now you can see that I can cancel it. If you don't want to do this step of writing out the factoring, that's fine. You can reduce um, from here. Just remember you have to reduce 1h from every single term. So we end up with 32 plus 16h. Now what were we letting h do? We are actually eventually letting h go towards the value 0. Oops, I forgot my h there. Let h go towards 0. If h ends up going towards 0, what's going to happen to this term? This term is going to go towards 0. So then all that's going to survive is the 32. Wait a second, that sounds familiar. Isn't that what we hypothesized the instantaneous speed would be when t0 equals 1 at the 1 second time point? Absolutely. So we have actually just proven here, using a process of taking the limit, which we're going to talk more about, um, to show that what we hypothesized actually is in fact the truth. If you were to repeat this entire process for t0 equals 2, you would see that we got the um, instantaneous speed at t equals 2, just like we hypothesized as well. That's it. That was my example of instantaneous speed using the average speed formula. So as we go through calculus, we're going to learn more tools to make this simpler, but we have to build up to them and understand why we're going towards what we're going to. So keep working hard, keep studying, and keep watching the videos.